Let's go! Let's go! Alright, so this is going to be a full guide on how to defeat Great Norm, known as a secret Red Worm boss, on a solo run. Before you hop into the game, you want to bring these specific items. Firstly, the golden armor plate is going to be your number one most important item since this boss fight is going to take place inside the Ether Storm. Being able to repair armor without having to worry about armor plates is crucial. If you do not have this yet, I would highly recommend you to try to get a somatic first by farming in the hardcore Ether Rift. Next, we have the flawless Ethereum Crystal, which upgrades your main load to tier 3. This is going to help you out a lot since it does cost 30,000 to pack a punch fully and you'd rather use those funds for other important items in game. Then we have the legendary ether tool which is equally as important as the flawless crystal. Maybe even more important just because you can't really get this item with money in the game and rather have to be very lucky to get it from drop. Then we have the shatter blast ammo mod. The reason I chosen this specific one is because the boss does have armor when you shoot at it so this would be helpful and it would help take care of crowd controls as well. And for the other two classified items here I have them at the end because I wanted to let you know that these aren't mandatory to bring. The Ether Blade would be a plus to have as it does instant kill a couple zombies every time and you are able to use it for the rest of the game. The Dog Bone I would honestly say is probably the most useless one out of the three classified semantics mainly because it's kind of just dies instantly during the boss fight. I think maybe you can heal it if you had a healing aura, but it's still not going to be that useful, especially because you're going to have a load of self revives equipped in. Now, this next item is also going to be one of your most important items to bring, which is actually the experimental gas. For some reason, throwing these at the boss does a lot of damage even after they nerfed it down. You can also get these back each time when you refill your ammo from the ammo crates. For Lethos, I went for Molotov. I think this one is just personal preferences. I just like it better because it has a wide radius for crowd control and can still inflict pretty high damage. For field upgrades, I use Energy Mine. Now, this one, you're probably wondering why Energy Mine? It seems to be maybe one of the most useless one. Honestly, all the field upgrades in this game is pretty underwhelming, besides healing Aurora, but that's only if you're on a squad team. The Energy Mine is mainly going to be used to help you take care of the elites during the boss fights. The Disciples, Mimics, and Manglers are really going to get into your way, and with a combination of Shadow Blast, you're going to be able to regain back your Energy Mine. Now, moving over to Weapon, I went with the Assault Rifle, Hogger 5.56. This AR takes the lead in damage power compared to the other ARs. For attachments that I use in my game, for barrel, I chose a cross X short barrel, mainly just for increase of movement speed, but I actually think the Banner 80 light barrel might be slightly better due to the cons. The reason I say this is because reducing bullet velocity means slower fire rate. I'd rather have a slightly more recoil and faster fire rate. I'd have to try on my neck fight though. Then for under barrel, I have the chewed angle grip. Again, this is just mainly for increase of movement speed. Anything that can help with movement speed on this battle is freaking a plus. For magazines, I have the 40 round mags where you have more ammo in your stock. Pretty straightforward. For stocks, I went with the Ignis F43 stock. Again here for increase of movement speed. The nose stock does show a much faster movement speed. However, the cons are kind of unappealing, so might not be the best choice. Then lastly, I give it my hog a, a sight mainly because I'm not a fan of the iron sight. I went with the SZ mini, but you know, this is just kind of personal preference. If you're okay without using a sight, you could slap on the laser sight for better hip fire or have a weird grip for better recoil control. And finally, before you launch into the game, you want to make sure you have the mandatory gear set up, such as the large rust sack, three armor vest, durable gas mask is going to be an absolute mandatory one because remember, you are fighting the boss fight within the ether storm. And lastly, half a self revive for kill streaks, it really doesn't matter which one you use. I've already done tests against the boss using sentry guns and juggernaut suit. They basically do no damage. I've chosen the motor strike mainly just to help me to clear the zombies. Now that you are ready, let's go over to how to defeat Greylorm. Once you're spawned into the game, the very first thing you want to check is the location of the Aether Storm because depending on where it is on the map, it's going to determine where you'll be fighting Greylorm. Now this is going to require a bit of RNG, but sometimes you will notice the storm spawns much further away from the battlefield. You want to try to get one where it spawns closer. If the storm is too far away, I would just exfil and reset because not only you have to beat the boss, but you're also fighting against time as well. You want to have at least a good solid 10 minutes right at the start of the battle if you want to have a good chance on defeating this solo. If you get lucky, you may get a very close by spawn or even literally spawning right at the battlefield where you'll be able to get the full 50 minutes for the fight. Fortunately, that game I died before even prepping up, so I couldn't even test it whether I could have actually fought it without waiting for the time countdown. If you do manage to get the football battlefield perfect because that's also the best area for the fight. Next thing you want to focus on is trying to earn as much points as you can since you'll be needing a tons of self revives. One easy 
easy way to do this is to head over to the red zone right away and complete a contract. For some reason, whichever tier contract you complete as your first one, if you're to go back to the lower tiers to complete contracts, you'll be earning the same amount of points. So for instance, if you completed your first contract in tier two, which rewards 3,000, then if you're to head back to tier one and complete a contract there, you'll still get the 3,000. I would only suggest going to the red zone for first objective if you see a cargo contract. Otherwise, I would suggest completing one in tier two first. If you got a good ether storm spawn like my game and you have the spare time, taking out the storm caller might be useful as you wouldn't need to deal with it during the boss fight. But this isn't mandatory. You also want to set up a vehicle nearby as you will need to restock on self revives after placing it in the USB. If you have the sorcerers or secondary, that would even be better. Keep in mind, I started my fight with 12 minutes and 26 seconds left. As I mentioned earlier in this video, you want to reset until you get a good ether storm spawn. Otherwise, sometimes you'll only be getting 9 or even 8 minutes for the full fight. Just like the other ether worm fights, you want to aim at his weak spots, which are the glowing red parts on his body. Careful when he launches the Godzilla blast from his mouth because it will instant kill you if you don't have any armor. Greylorm also has a distraction ability where he shoots out 4 orbs and when it comes to this, you want to put full priorities on shooting these down first because they will shred your armor. Now, one of his main attacks is when he decides to go underground and basically launch you up in the air and shoot you. While he is underground, you want to take his opportunity to try to take out the zombies either by shooting them or using your lethal to charge back up your energy mine. Once he launches you up, there are two ways to get out of this. First is while you're in the air, simply spam your parachute button and sometimes you'll be able to escape the attack. Most cases, you'll be stuck in his mouth and when this happens, simply hold down your shooting trigger while spamming parachute and 99% of the time that I've done this, I've never went down and simply got out. And in case if you're curious, active energy mine while being in his mouth does not do anything. Another important thing you want to keep an eye out for is your gas mask. There are always two ammo crates surrounding this boss fight and each time you refill it, it repairs your gas mask. The cooldowns are 60 seconds but since you have two, you just need to wait 30 seconds. What I usually do is once my gas mask reaches level 2, I go refill. Make sure your gas mask does not break otherwise you will not survive the fight. In between your shots, you also want to throw out your gas grenades at the boss if they do deal a good amount of damage. Remember, you always get two back each time you refill. If you get stormed with too many zombies, remember you can always use your energy mine or kill streets to take care of them. One last critical thing that you need to know is that Grey Lorm can regenerate health and he only does this if you're currently down while he is underground. Try your best not to let this happen because he will regenerate back a good amount. If this happens, simply just run up to his healing vortex and shoot the ground. Once you defeat him, he will drop high rarity loot and a rift reward will be spawning and that is where you'll be able to obtain one of the rarest somatities in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, which includes the Sorcerer Wonder Weapon, the Flawless Crystals, or the Legendary 2 -0. Couple things to say before we wrap the video up is Dragonar Killstreak and Sentry Guns do basically no damage against Greylorm. Guarding up as a team to take on this boss fight will make it a lot easier, but his health does scale based on the amount of players. If you found this video guide to be helpful and wish to see more content like these, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts on this boss fight because I think this is probably one of the most epic boss fight in Call of Duty Zombies. And we'll see you guys on the next video.